back with Killer Kyle. I hope you don't mind that nickname I just spurred the moment. Not at all. We were watching uh, Impact this past week, and it was a very cool beginning that we saw, like, the past, you know, with, like, Raven and Dudley Boys and Samoa Joe, and it was like an anniversary episode, I think. If I'm not mistaken. That was Make Impact Great Again. Which I don't really know what that means. But a lot of interesting things that happened on the show. Yeah, it was kind of like a look at the past leading into the future. And where the future is going to go. Sort of, if you will. Yeah, yeah but also you get Jeremy Borash who came out. And I don't know about Josh Matthews' character. It kind of seems out of place for him because, yeah. you know, being the little pipsqueak in WWE, actually, I also noticed that they've taken a lot more pot shots at WWE. This past week, yeah, they did. Including the whole Josh Matthews got fired from being their commentator and then him being bringing up the Georgia Dome Wrestlemania, you know, which... Jeremy Boros is bringing up how he kind of got, he got mentored by Mike Tanay, which is one of the original er, commentators for Impact, and Josh is making reference to how he was mentored by Jim Ross. Exactly, and that was pretty cool. But then he went into... Uh, the debut of Alberto El Patron and Zap Coulter later on and stuff like that. And Bruce Pritchard. And then Bruce Pritchard came out, he cut a promo mentioning WWE wrestlers. You know, back when we were kids, I don't ever, like I know there was the Monday Night Wars. Right. But I don't ever remember WCW attacking WWE, like bringing names WWE wrestlers besides like maybe Kevin Nash and Scott Hall referencing Shawn Michaels or whatever. Yeah, like you'd have there was a few WWF stars at the time that jumped to WCW but there wasn't really any reference as to past wrestlers being brought up. Now, there was a time where WCW would give away the ending of matches to Raw at that time, but there wasn't really any big mention of previous stars on WCW. And with, like, Bruce Pritchard bringing up The Rock, John Cena, Stone Cold. It's like, okay, we know you were there at this time period when, like, John Cena first came in, The Rock, Austin, and so on. But is it really necessary to bring it up? Yeah, I thought that was a bit weird. Kyle mentioned earlier him also doing, like, a brother love type thing. Yeah, I noticed with Bruce Pritchard's promo in the ring on Impact, it was very well done. It just seemed there was little nuances of brother love yeah. in his promo. Well, as I keep saying, is uh, WWE and TNA will probably, probably be another invasion in the next 10 to 20 years, maybe. Like I said, there's always... I mean, you get TNA stars that have gone on to NXT. But yeah. also you get WWE stars like Alberto. Like Damian Sandow. Now Aaron Aranis. Cody Rhodes. And it's kind of interesting how that is. So you get that aspect. Yes. But sooner or later, it's going to be, you know, something interesting. But yeah, it's just kind of the way it is. Um, but also get to see Alberto in the main event facing Bobby Lashley. To me, it almost seemed rather quick. Yeah. 
for Alberto to get a title shot. And not even basically his first night on the job. And not even earning it. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I'm trying to think what wrestler won the championship, either TNA or WWE, on their first night. Well, there was Paige. Yes, there she was. She won Paige. the Davis Championship her first night on Raw oh, after yeah. the night after WrestleMania. Yeah, I never thought about that because there are a date night, so. Yeah. And that coincidence. So, yeah, it's interesting just to see how that happened. You yeah. get the American Wolves who turned on each other two weeks ago. About that, yeah. And now they're still feuding. There was all mentions. Um, but Davey and Eddie didn't really fight until the beginning. Yeah, at the start of the show, when Impact first kicked off, they had uh, Eddie and Davey kind of fighting in the crowd. And it only lasted maybe five minutes, roughly. Yeah, but then he got the confrontation with uh, Eddie and Angelina Love, which I thought, okay... So, let's say, because I always expect a sneak attack. That's common nowadays. No worries. So, I expected David Richards to jump Eddie. Didn't really happen, and Angelina did one of her patented, not, like, hard slaps to Eddie. <laughs> knock, knock your teeth at your head slaps. Yes, and you could feel it, too, even. Oh, the sound of it thug. was, like, thud. Yeah. And one thing I mentioned to Matt before I came down here, we did this video, a little video, was Eddie made reference to Angelina said that Davey was more of a man than Eddie was. And after Eddie got slapped by Angelina, Eddie said, considering the fact that he's a real man, you hit harder than he does. Yeah. It was an interesting uh, impact. Yes. You know, I unfortunately didn't watch Impact back when they started because it yeah. didn't really get Spike at that point. But when I watch those episodes, I think, wow, very cool just to see how it evolved and yes. how awesome it was. One thing that I thought was really cool they did was they made mention of the very first night of TNA, well, NWA TNA, yeah. as it was originally known back then, June 19th, 2002. Yes, that's right. And then they went into their 15th anniversary and Slammiversary coming up soon, so. Yeah, day before my 19th birthday, very cool. But yeah, you know, then Bruce Pritchard mentioning, you know, bringing up guys like Kurt Angle. Stan and AJ Styles. That was, uh, that was, uh, Dutch Mantel. Oh, yes. Yeah. Dutch Mantel. They had Dutch Mantel come out on his little scooter. And he made, one thing that was really good, well, it was odd, but it was good. He was going to say, my name is, and he's like, no, no, wait, I can't say that. What I can legally say is my name used to be Zeb Coulter. But my real name is Dutch Mantel, and then he went into past stars that were in TNA, like Kurt Angle, like AJ Sting, Booker T. What really surprised me was Christian. Christian, yeah. Because, yeah, I'm not sure how long he was there, but I know that he was the TNA champion at one point. I think he was there for, I'll see. Probably a good two years or so. Yeah, I think that uh, that was cool that they even mentioned him. But then I saw wrestlers, like there's a show, and again, not blanking, and Mick Foley hosted it. Oh. Uh, Epics? Yeah, Epics, that's yeah. how it was. And then in the intro, you saw guys like Rachel of Durham and Ken Shamrock mm -hmm. and. Guys, I didn't even know if we're in TNA. <laughs> yeah. Even Kurt Henning, who was there for like... Brief period of a time. Brief yes. period, as was Brock Lesnar. I yes. think. Yeah. So that was cool. 
wishing that I was there when I first saw that it, it existed. Yeah, those of you that are longtime fans of Impact Wrestling will know what I'm talking about. But there was a bunch of wrestlers that were in TNA to beginning that may you wouldn't necessarily have thought were there, but when you actually go back and watch it, or if you remember it, you're like, wow. Because I remember watching a match with Raven and, uh, was it Jeff Jarrett or AJ? I think it was Jeff Jarrett. And one person that I seen on there that I didn't realize was in TNA until I saw that was Mickey James. Yes. Yeah, she was her name was Alexis Marno, something like that. And she was one of Raven the, the Raven's flock, if you will. And it's yeah. like, wow. And this was like years before yeah. she was in WWE. Yes. Like I knew she was in Yeah, well, I found that out too, but also, because I knew she eventually went back to TNA. Mm, yeah. But, it's also the same with, like, Gail Kim. True. Uh, I think she, WWE for a brief period before going back yeah. to TNA. But, uh, it's always, it's interesting to see who you don't know has already been to TNA. Uh, like Jeff Hardy, even, you know. Yeah, Jeff Hardy spent... Quite a while in. Well, he's still there today. Yes. But he's been in. Like, I think when he got into some trouble with the WWE, he went to TNA yeah. and spent a little bit of time in TNA and then at some point along the lines went back to WWE. But it seems like now there's. Maybe a chance Jeff and maybe Matt will go back to WWE, but the way things are going with them right now, they're like top level. Yeah. Well, that's cool when they're doing the time travel. Yeah. To like Mexico, Mexico. and then they go to. I don't even know where they <sighs> were for the. Well, one was a, like a flea market, and before that, it was like, oh, one was MCW. I have no idea what that is. It's like I think it's like a independent. Oh, uh, FCW. No, no, MCW. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I know what FCW was. Yeah. FCW was Florida Championship Wrestling. No, and I think that's cool. I don't think they'll ever do one with WWE because WWE was that huge. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to see TNA eventually, if they do the invasion angle, like they did in 2001. Hopefully they'll do it properly. Yeah. Because, yeah, 2001, I'm finding out, was not what it should have been, but whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it'll be cool to see that. The thing about the 2001 invasion of WWE with... WCW and ECW was a lot of the main wrestlers that were in WCW were I think still under guaranteed contracts so they were just kind of sitting at home doing their own thing. When they had this invasion they had Decent wrestlers, but it wasn't the wrestlers of uh, that you would expect to go into an invasion angle like yeah. that. Unfortunately, no, because you know, I don't know whose idea it was, and I understand they were not under contract. But guess what? <laughs> you can't have WCW and fade WWE without Goldberg and Sting. And I mean, look how long it took to get Sting, and that was a joke. Yeah. I said that before in a video, like, you bring back Sting, so what, he could jump to Triple H at WrestleMania? Which uh, will be coming up soon. 
But anyways. See, for me, I believe Sting would have had a much longer tenure in WWE. And who knows how far it would have went. Had he not got, had he not got that neck injury at the hands of Seth Rollins. Yeah. Although, i seen an end show on the WWE Network, if you haven't, watch it. It's called Legends with JBL, and Sting was on that. And he made mention of the fact that it was kind of his own fault that he got injured, only because he, when he initially went into the turnbuckle, when Rollins powerbombed him, he kind of, he went in properly, but there was something that happened, and he's not kind of whiplash and then he was getting like numbing tingling sensations in his like arms and then when he did it again it was like his whole body kind of went numb and that's when you seen him kind of oh, flop yeah, face that, down on that the was hard to watch yeah when they say oh this is hard to watch that was hard to watch yeah because you didn't know what was going on yeah for those that were actually watching it it may, like, in there, in your minds, it was probably like, oh, Sting's just selling it to make it look good. But, no, like, Sting was, like, legitimately injured. Yes. So, anyways, there it is, you know, TNA Impact. I, man, I can't really think of anything else. But, uh... Well, there was the one bit that you and I were talking about before I came down was... Well, I even made mention of it. Zap, or, well, Zap Colder, Dust Man Joe, mm -hmm. and the scooter. Yeah, I don't know what's with that. Like, I thought maybe he had a MS or something to that effect, because he used that scooter at WWE near the yeah. end, and I'm not really sure. I will have to look that up, but... When he first came back in the scooter, I thought they were playing off of the fact that when he initially was away, it was like a ankle or leg, it was a leg injury of some kind. And it's like, okay, so they've got him in the scooter, kind of working off of that. But then to see him in TNA or in the scooter, it's like, okay, are they kind of continuing on with the theme of like Zeb Coulter's in a scooter because of like an injury or you know what's the deal yeah I don't know what's going on with that but that was a pretty good episode it got a little bit of decay in there yeah that one was kind of weird random not as weird as Jeff Hardy wrestling a kangaroo uh, that was, yeah that was um, but it is pretty cool that Happy can see you in your backyard, but still, yeah. it was an interesting excitement, as always. Mm. Uh, okay, well, you know, this was an uh, interesting chat. I uh, really appreciate, again, having another video with Kyle here. And I will be back tomorrow with WrestleMania 31, and I'll talk to you then. Bye.